In this video, a seven-year-old Caucasian boy is brought to the physician's office because his face is puffy, especially in the morning. Proteinuria is discovered on urine analysis. Further analysis, is, further analysis reveals that the protein in his urine is principally albumin with minimal amounts of IgG and alpha-2 macroglobulin. The patient's proteinuria best fits which of the following categories, and there is six options. Now the thing is, we already know that someone who is about seven years old has two most common diseases. For nephritic syndrome, it's PSGN, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, and for nephrotic syndrome, it's minimal change disease. And this patient has puffy face and lots of proteinuria. We're pretty sure we're talking about the minimal change disease. Now before we move on to which of the options we are thinking about, let's see the basement membrane and how it's made up of. Now the basement membrane and the glomerular wall, there is the endothelium right here. There is holes in between. And then we have the glomerular basement membrane right here. And then we have the epithelium on the other side. So you can see that there are big holes through which things can pass here, right? Which it's, this is the endothelium. So endothelium to epithelium, they will probably move in this direction. So there is holes through which that they can pass. So it's quite clear that, um, you know, they can pass through these holes. But at the same time, we know that there is charges over here, the negative charges of the glomerular basement membrane, which is going to repel something, even though they are small enough to pass through the holes, right? So albumin, their negatively charged glomerular basement membrane is also negatively charged. So even though they're small enough to fit through the hole, they're repelled by this negative charge, and albumin is not seen in our urine. That kind of um, selectiveness is called charge selectivity okay when the charge is repelling them and albumin is not seen in urine but let's say something which is IgG which is much bigger it does not even fit through the hole so that would be size selectivity it's because because of this big size it cannot go through the hole so that's size selectivity so that's all this question is asking the patient's proteinuria best fits which of the following it's going to be selective. It's not tubular or overload or functional or orthocytic or isolated. It's going to be selective. The patient's proteinuria best fits because this proteinuria, the, um, in minimal change disease, that proteinuria is due to charge selectivity. So that's why selective is the answer. But let's take this opportunity to talk about the other options a little bit more. So first, let's talk about option A, which is tubular or tubular, selective, uh, tubular uh, proteinuria. Now, tubular proteinuria is associated with the presence of low molecular weight proteins, such as beta-2 macroglobulin, okay? So beta-2 macroglobulin or immunoglobulin, okay? And light chains, light chains or amino acids and retinal binding protein. Now, these are normally filtered by the glomerulus and almost completely reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. They appear in the urine only when the proximal tubule function is disrupted. For instance, if there is tubular interstitial nephritis, then that, that whole channel is going to be disrupted and we are going to see these kind of proteinuria. So in short, we see tubular proteinuria when there is going to be small proteins can leak through but they are usually completely reabsorbed. And when that, uh, that reabsorption is, is kind of defected or disturbed, that's when we see tubular proteinuria. So for choice A, the problem is really the tubules. The tubules lose their ability to reabsorb. As a result, we end up having protein in our urine. Now let's talk about choice B which is overload. This is quite obvious. There is a lot of protein being made for some reason and the tubules cannot just keep up. There is so much protein here that once it gets out, it cannot reabsorb all of that back. There is not enough manpower, pretty much. So proteins of low molecular weight are normally in filtered by the glomerulus and reabsorbed at the proximal tubule 
when the low molecular weight proteins are produced in greater amount, the reabsorptive capacity of PCT is exceeded and overload of proteinuria occurs. This is most commonly seen in multiple myeloma. Okay, so the first one we have the, the, uh, the tubule becoming defected in a due to tubular nephritis. The next one is going to next one is going to be overload. Now what about choice C? Functional. Now functional proteinuria is caused by a change in blood flow through the glomerulus, precipitating factors, for example, exercise, high fever, emotional st stress, cold exposure. These are some of the common causes of proteinuria in young adults with normal renal function, and it disappears on repeated testing. So it's a very um, transient kind of condition, not really a pathology. What about choice E, orthostatic? Now, orthostatic proteinuria predominantly occurs in older, tall, thin adolescents and is characterized by increased protein excretion in upright position, but normal protein excretion in supine position. Albuminuria is usually less than one gram per day, and renal function is normal. Overnight collection of the urine uh, reveals normal, normal albumin excretion. So this is just you know, if they're standing upright, they lose more protein. If they're supine, they lose less protein. This is, again, not a pathology, something that we just observed through experimentation. But the point is, in this question, we were talking about minimal change disease being selective. It has both charge and um, size selectivity.